The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Wait, that's the wrong one. One second. Alas, the attempt to create the perfect bulletin has once again come up a little short. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministries of angels and mortals. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may help and defend us here on earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families on earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The word of the Lord. The Lord has set a throne in heaven, and the sovereignty of the Lord has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you holy angels, you mighty one who do God's bidding. Bless the Lord, all you holy hosts. You 
Bless the Lord, all you works of God, in all places of God's dominion. A reading from the Revelation to John. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown out, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the 1980s, there was a series of books written by the author Frank Peretti that enjoyed a somewhat of a resurgence in the late 90s, early 2000s as they were seen sort of in the same light as the Left Behind series. Uh, they were often categorized in bookstores under the Christian fiction section and sometimes in some bookstores there was even put into their own little section with a few other novels that were referred to as Christian horror which is about the oddest title I've ever heard for a book series. 
Uh, the, the first book in this series, uh, which is titled This Present Darkness, if you ever want to go read it, uh, is, is certainly a, a trip. Uh, I, w- I was given a copy of it in, when I was in high school by a youth minister who said that it was an, it was an amazing book that, that they really loved. Um, and I, who had grown up on Tolkien and Terry Brooks and um, Isaac Asimov, read it and went, eh, it's all right. Uh, this present darkness is, is, is the, the conceit of the book is that uh, from the author's perspective, from the reader's perspective, the veil between the visible world and the spiritual world is open so that the reader can see both sides of the drama as the battle between God and Satan takes place in one community for the soul of each person and for the, indeed for the soul of the entire community. And we see angels and demons fighting along with the people who they influence. And it's an interesting story in many ways, because it, it, it belies an idea about who and what angels are. And it's at the, at the core of its belief is this idea that angels are there for us that angels are there in many ways to serve us. And I think that if you read it that way, that you and Jacob would have a very similar idea of what angels are and a very similar misconception about what Jacob saw in his dream that night at the place that would become Bethel the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel that would eventually be sacked and destroyed by the Chalcedonians. Jacob comes to this moment, the moment that we hear about in this morning's first reading from Genesis, because he has been grasping all his life Indeed, he came out of his mother's womb grasping at the heel of his just older twin brother Esau. And from that moment all the way to when we see him in today's reading, Jacob, at his mother's encouragement, because Jacob is his mother's favorite, while Esau, his father Isaac's favorite, Jacob is always trying to one-up his brother, to get one over on his brother, to take over the birthright that by some logic, was due Esau. And finally, Esau has had enough, and Jacob's mother says, maybe you uh, need to take a trip before your brother murders you, and sends Jacob off without really any resources to the land of her fathers, to her homeland, to find a wife for himself and not a Moabite wife. So Jacob is running from his home, not sure that he will ever see it again, with not really any wealth to his name, so much so that he has to use a rock as a pillow. And when he has this dream about a ladder between heaven and earth with angels, messengers, descending, ascending and descending upon it, bringing God's will to earth and carrying earth's prayers up to heaven, he identifies it with a place, right? He calls that place Beth-El. And just after the end of where we read this morning, he will take the rock that he used for his pillow pillow, and he will put it on top of a pillar. He'll take it, a a, um, tree trunk, and he'll set it up as a pillar, and he'll place the rock on top of it so he can remember it if he should ever pass this way again. Because he says, truly, God is in this place. That the connection, he believes, is between God and this place. And I think that's Jacob's key misunderstanding, possibly. 
because he will have to contend with angels again. And the angels won't contend with him in this place, but in another place. A place that he will name Penuel because the angel dislocated his hip during their uh, struggle in the night. And in the midst of that struggle with a heavenly being, Jacob will be renamed Israel, the people of God. And from Jacob's children will come the people through which God lets God's will be known upon earth, the people through whom God hopes the knowledge and love of God will spread throughout all that God has made. Those people will become that ladder. Because the ladder, it seems, was never really the place. Jacob exclaims, God is in this place. But in fact, it is God is with me. That that God hoped Jacob would see, it seems. Because when Jesus uses the scripture, the scripture of Jacob's ladder in today's gospel, Jesus is doing so in response to Nathanael's statement that, that Jesus is God's son and the king of Israel. And Jesus is like, no, 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 no. This isn't about a place. We already made this mistake. Jacob already got this a little bit confused. If you think that because I saw you under the fig tree when you were talking game about Nazareth, remember, Nathaniel's the one who said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Much like we might ask, can anything good come out of Tacoma? When, when Jesus stops Nathaniel and says, you will see things greater than this. He is trying to get Nathaniel to understand that it is not about a place anymore. It is not about a position, even being the king of Israel. That's not what this is about. Just like it wasn't about Bethel for Jacob. Bethel does not have that long a history, relatively speaking, within the biblical narrative. It will become famous as a secondary place for the worship of God, another hilltop upon which people think God can be worshipped. It will be sacked at the fall of the northern kingdom of Israel and never rise again. It will be nothing more than a footnote in Samaria by the time Jesus is ministering, a place where Samaritans go to worship because they can't make it down to Jerusalem, and even if they could, they're not really welcome. It is not about that place, Jesus says. It's not about that throne in Jerusalem. This is about God and God's people and their relationship, and I am changing everything. You will see angels ascending and descending, not in a place, not for the purpose that you think, not for the kingship that you think I am worthy of. You will see angels angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man because God now seeks renewed communication and relationship with humanity. Jesus chooses that phrase, the Son of Man, specifically to indicate The idea that God is connected fully and completely now with humanity, with every human person that God has made. And that that, that the privilege of seeing the ladder between heaven and earth connected through Jesus is not just about Jesus, but it's about everyone. That the relationship between God and humanity is now complete. It is without mediation. It is a full connection that is available to everyone whom God has made. That was God's hope with Israel. The hope with the children of Jacob. That through them, that they could be the mediator between God and the world. That that through them, God could bring this, they could bring the message of God's love for the world to the whole world. They could be an exemplar of of an unfettered relationship between God and humans. But things got in the way. 
It didn't work out the way God was hoping. People made other choices. And so God in Jesus has said, all right, we're going to do this differently. We're just going to go all in from the beginning. Anyone has access. Anyone has the ability to come to God, to hear God's word. Anyone has access to God. God is with us, right? That's the, the, the name we like to shout and sing about at Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. Not just the Son of God, not just the King of Israel, God with us. Not just for one lifetime, but for all time. And those messengers, they're not just there for us. They're not just there to take care of us, to serve us even. They're there to work with us for God's purposes. These holy beings who really look nothing like the the illustrations mostly that we have of them, right? If most of us saw an angel face to face, we'd cower in terror like most people do in in the biblical narratives. So much so that the angels always have to start with, do not be afraid. It's okay. Don't be scared. Because angels are terrible beings. There's a a picture of the Annunciation, the the message of the angel Gabriel to Mary, where Mary is sitting at the foot of her bed, uh, painted as as a young woman, and you don't see a body so much uh, of the heavenly messenger, so much as you just see light, luminous and bright and almost too hard to look at, even in a painting. And other descriptions of angels that are biblically based have angels with, that are just wings and eyes and all sorts of other things. These are holy beings and messengers that serve God, that live to serve God. That is the purpose of their creation, are to serve God as God's messengers, as God's workers in the world of the Spirit. And yes, part of that work is defending them, but not for our service. Not just for our protection, but for God's, just as we are God's. God's people, God's children, with a relationship that is unadulterated and unfettered. And what would that mean if we were to live like that? If we were to live knowing that there are beings all around us who are serving God that we cannot see, that, there, that God, in fact, is right here with us in every moment and day of our lives. What would it look like? What would we believe if we really thought that through and believed it and knew it to be true? How would it change what we expect of ourselves, of the world around us? What would we think that we could do that we could be to the world, for the world, if we took that in, that idea that we are gods and God is with us, and that there is more to this world than the things that we can see, that there are heavenly beings around us all doing God's will, and we are invited to join them. How would it change us? Would it change us so much that we might be willing to believe that we could be a part, even just a small part, of building a kingdom. A kingdom that doesn't look anything like the kingdoms of the world, that doesn't look anything like being the king of Israel, that looks like nothing so much as a vast and grand dinner party without end in a heavenly place, a new Jerusalem, free from sickness and sorrow and death. Could we imagine that if we believed that God was with us? What can we do now, starting today? God with us. God willing to create this new kingdom with the help 
of God and all the angels and the Holy Spirit and Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten of nothing, of one name. In peace, we pray to you, O Lord. For all people in their daily life and work, for all our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Greg, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and our church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for the Anglican Church of Canada, for the Standing Commission on Liturgy and Music of the Episcopal Church and the Episcopal Diocese of Maryland and Northwestern Pennsylvania, in the Diocese of Olympia for Houston Camp and Conference Center, in Gold Bar and St. Andrew's House in Union, and for the Refugee Resettlement Office. We pray for the nation and all those in authority, for the welfare of the world, especially the victims of the conflict in Ukraine and all those affected by earthquake, fire, flood, or hurricane. We pray for those who need healing, especially Judy, Kathy, 
Kathy, Ginny, Scott, Sharon, Jean, Ken, Teresa, Marianne, Phil, Terry, Laura, Jake, Patty, and Bjorn. We pray for our own needs and those of others. For those in the armed forces and their families and for our enemies. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for those celebrating the anniversary of their birth, for those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage, and those celebrating the anniversary of their baptism, especially Betty. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your, your name, name forever, forever and, ever. and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We are truly sorry, and we repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil done on our behalf, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated for a moment. Welcome to all. We're glad you're here with us this morning. Uh, I just wanted to share uh, both a welcome to whether you're joining us here in person or on our video stream. It's wonderful to have you. A few announcements that I want to highlight from, from the bulletin this morning. Uh, the first of which is that there is a blessing of the animals next Sunday at noon uh, in commemoration of the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, right out in the parking lot here, we'll be blessing animals. We ask that you keep them um, under control in whatever way that looks like, whether it's a leash, a pet carrier, a terrarium that you leave in the car if it's a snake. Um, however, however it is that you can best keep them safe uh, for themselves and for others, uh, please bring them, and we look forward to celebrating the Feast of St. Francis, who saw God's creation and all of God's creatures uh, as signs of God's love, and we want to share a blessing with all of God's creatures next Sunday at noon. There is a Redeemer work party. However, late-breaking news, 
good news, there's notes at the back of the announcements in your bulletin so you can write this down. It is not October 15th, as it says in the bulletin. It is October 8th. This coming Saturday, October 8th, work party at the Church of the Redeemer because, I don't know if you noticed, it's fall. It doesn't feel like fall outside. The high today doesn't say that it's fall, but it is indeed fall, and the long, wet, dark is coming. And before the long, wet, dark gets here, we want to make sure that we are prepared at Redeemer, particularly outside with our grounds, for the long, dark, wet. Uh, And we need your help to do it. Um, You know, it is through the work of the people of God that we create the church of God, and that includes landscaping. Uh, So uh, 10 o'clock this coming Saturday, the 8th, Uh, We'll begin with morning prayer, then there'll be coffee and probably donuts, because someone always brings donuts to a work party, which is good. You need fuel to do the work. Um, As Jesus said, the laborer deserves to be paid. We pay in donuts here at the church. Uh, So 10 o'clock, morning prayer, then coffee and donuts, and then work. Uh, This coming Saturday, the 8th. Now that is because another late-breaking announcement that is not in your bulletin, but I do want to highlight, and this is important, so use the notes on page 21, if you need to, to write this down. Uh, I was told this morning that the memorial service for Ginny Ferguson has finally been scheduled. It will be October 15th at noon at St. John's Church, Episcopal Church in Kirkland. So um, there'll be more information about that in uh, upcoming e-newsletters and and bulletins next week, but just mark that on your calendars right now. Those of you who knew Ginny and want to be a part of that memorial celebration uh, and attend it, October 15th at noon uh, will be her memorial at St. John's in Kirkland. There are lots of other announcements in your bulletin how you can be a part of creating a church through coffee hour, through uh, supporting merchants to seafarers, serving on Sundays, all sorts of different things in your bulletin. I hope you will take it home, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest it, and that we will see you back here in person or online very soon. It is wonderful to have you. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, O Holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and in us into one body. Through your spirit you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care so that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us in covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us. He revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the eternal heritage of your daughters and sons that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever and ever through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. To you be honor and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy Eternal Majesty, Holy Incarnate Word, Holy Abiding Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you now and forevermore.